Yes, you may okay. go ahead, you may begin. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. For those that I haven't said hi already. <laughs> so we'll be spending the afternoon together. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there'll be others who will be joining us. They're still having some technical issues connecting, but we're going to start anyway because we have quite a number of um, points to, to cover this afternoon. Just to start off, I just want to say to the board, uh, the committee facilitators, all the facilitators, and those who are watching us live, welcome. My name is Denise Mokoko, and I'll be taking you through this afternoon's sessions. And just to make things clear, I think it's important that I should start by saying to you, don't be fooled by what you see on camera. I'm actually 21. <laughs> okay. Um, I've been looking forward to this session. And I've seen as well on social media that people have been excited, you know, couldn't wait for today to happen. And here we are, it's happening, it's happening. And I just think it's also important as well to just to make everybody be on the same mind in terms of why we are here. And I'll take you back to 2020. Somebody had an idea to say, but how can I make a difference in other people's lives? And this person knew that, you know, the dream that uh, they had was just big enough that they couldn't do by themselves. And they rallied and got a number of people together and you know, shared those visionaries. And then Girl Leader was born. And then today we are here training the first uh, group of facilitators who are going to have the first cohort trained uh, under Girl Leader. And I think those people you know, that didn't say, training is expensive, but we want to help people. There's nothing we can do. They sat down and came out, became creative and invited volunteers. And now the ball is rolling and we can't wait to, to start. So at this moment, I just feel that we need just to applaud them because because of them, here we are and we are going to make a difference in a lot of people's lives. So if you can just clap our hands for them to say, we salute you. I think this is it. <laughs> okay. And today's session is going to go like this. There are actually three pillars. I think you facilitators are aware. We have the communication pillar, the mental uh, pilot, and Project Me. And each of these pillars has a program director. And each of them will be giving an overview, firstly, of what that pillar is about. And then after that, we're going to go into breakout rooms where each and every pillar is going to be discussed in depth, in detail. And then after that, we'll go back to the big group and then we will close the session for today. But in between, there'll be breaks where you can stretch, go to uh, the office, the small office, not the big office, the small office, or make yourself a cup of tea or water, you know, so that we are always fresh and then we can center and concentrate and be present in what we are going to be doing. So at this moment, I'd like to hand over to Sanel Dlamini, who is the program director for communications, just to give us an overview for, of what this pillar is about. Over to you, Sanele. Hi, everyone. Am I audible? Can you hear yes, me? Yes, I can hear you. My name is Usanele Jamini, and I'm the program director of communications, like Denise has said. Um, I'm just going to have a quick presentation here. I don't know if you can all see my screen. Okay, so a little about me while we wait for it to load. Um, I am a rambler of notes and I think that's how I found myself 
um, engaging and partaking in things that have to do with public speaking and things that have to do with um, just communicating in general. So from a young age, I've always participated in such things from speech and drama to public speaking to forum discussions to debating. So I'm just quickly waiting for it to load and then we can start with the presentation. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, there you go. Are you winning, Sanele? Uh, it's just loading right now, Denise. I don't know if you can see okay. my screen. Can you see it? Yes, I can see your page two appearing here. Yes, I'm just waiting to press present. Okay. It is loading. All righty. Okay, there you go. So like Denise has mentioned, I am the program director of the communication pillar. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what this pillar entails and what these sessions are going to be about. So uh, the two sessions that we have is the first one being the fit and active listener. And the second one is called the influencer. So under the foot and active listener, the outcome is to allow um, to allow all great leaders to be able to know what being an active listener is and what the components of being an active listener is, and also how to respond after active listening. So communication is something that we do every day. Even now, I am communicating with you. Um, it is a skill that we all need to know and we all need to have. And that's why we believe that this session is so important for it to be the first session. Okay, so we're going to look at things such as the listening blocks. So what stops you from being an active listener? Things like rehearsing. Um, so as the person is talking, as you're listening, sometimes we're just so ready um, we're already preparing the answer in our mind. We're so ready to respond. Uh, the second one being filtering, where we only listen to half of it. Sometimes where um, we are all guilty of this, we all do it at times. Um, and this one, advising, is the one I'm most guilty of because I'm, I think I'm Dr. Phil. In my head, I think I'm Dr. Phil. So <laughs> whenever someone is talking or telling me something, I'm always ready with the advice. And this can be a listening block because you are just trying to solve the problem. And then the third one, can, um, sorry, the last one is external factors. So this is looking at things like hunger. Um, when you are hungry, it's quite difficult to listen. Um, so that can also be a listening block and affect you from being an active listener. And then we also want to look at things like the steps to active listening, um, like paying attention, being present, having eye contact, keeping eye contact is so important because you show the person that I'm here, I am with you and I am listening. Um, keeping an open mind, it is so important for us to have an open mind. And as we go into the rotation, we're going to go deeper into this and look at things like the three J's. Um, like I said, this is just an overview. And then think of don't impose your own ideas, listen to what is being said wait for a pause to ask questions, pay attention to nonverbal clues and give feedback at the end because we are active listening, we are not um, reflective listening, right? So we're also gonna look at nonverbal active listening. So how you can be an active listener while using your body language. So like I said, eye contact, posture, uh, all those things, even the setup. 
Um, but like I said, we're gonna go deeper into this with the room. I just don't wanna take up too much time now. Um, but we're gonna look at where and how you sit, how that can also uh, play part of your active listening experience and just it all comes together at the end of the day. So the different types of communication. So after listening, you have to respond. Responding is my favorite part. <laughs> like I said, I'm a rambler of notes. <laughs> so you have to respond and there are different types of communication, right? So you can have strong communication, you can have weak communication and you can have aggressive communication. So strong communication is when you're saying your feelings, how you feel and your thoughts in a clear way. Aggressive communication, like the word says, it's forceful. And weak communication is when you don't say your feelings and your thoughts in a clear way. And then the second session is called the influencer. Um, so the outcomes of this is how to write a speech and the importance of practicing a speech. The reason why we called it an in, the influencer is because we all know we have social media influencers, Abu Mishali Damase. Um, they are social media influencers, but through speeches, through communication, you too can also be an influencer. You are influencing an audience and you're trying to get them to sell or to buy into your idea. So we're going to look at the introduction, the body and conclusion and how to write it, right? So your introduction must be thought provoking, it must be entertaining, um, it can be entertaining or it can be personal. This is how you capture your audience, this is how you get everyone's attention by how you start. Then you have your body which has your main point, so you start with the point and then you have sub points as well. You can also hear um, have personal stories, anecdotes, and things like that. And then we have your conclusion, where you summarize your main points. You can call them to action and say, hey, I want you to do this, or please do this. Um, it can be a part of reflection, or you can even inspire them at the end. So just introduction tips. So what an introduction should entail. Um, the acronym we used for this is how do successful youngsters operate? So hooking your audience, describing the relevance of your topic. Why are people there listening to you today? Um, state your innovation. What is new about your perspective? There's no such thing as a brand new topic. Um, everything has been discussed. Um, so why is it that people should listen to your perspective on that topic? Your credibility, and this is if it's necessary. So why are you, why are you the one that is talking on that day or that is making or delivering the speech and then outline your main points? And yeah, that is the end of my presentation. Um, for more information, you can just go to www.girlleader.org. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Sanele. Yeah, we, we have an idea of what that uh, the communication pillar is about and how to sharpen our skills in terms of communication. And it's true, most of us will listen to respond we don't listen to understand, think, and then respond. <laughs> so I'm also guilty of that <laughs> advising. Thank you so much, uh, Sanele, for that overview. Uh, Poshia, uh, we can now come and explain to us, uh, give us an overview of the pillar mental pilot. Okay. Hi everyone, I hope you can see me. If you can't, just kindly let me know. Um, my name is Portia Mwebe. I am a psychology honor student from the University of the Witwatersrand. But importantly and most excitedly, I am the um, program director for the Mental Pilot Pillar. So before I go any further, let me just share my screen so I can really tell you what the Mental Pilot Pillar is about. Yes. Yes. Can everybody see it? Um, not yet, but it's still sharing. Okay. It's mm. sharing. Still coming. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm hoping you can by now. At least it's loading. Okay, is everybody on board? Can everybody see? Yeah, mm -hmm. now we can see. Yes. Okay. okay, okay. Okay, that's perfect. Once again, everybody, welcome to the Girl Leader Mental Pilot mini presentation. And um, just like I have said, I am Kosha Mwabe. I am the program director for the Mental Pilot. Um, I think if I were to describe myself in two words, I'll just say that I'm very compassionate and I'm very um, filled with so much rigor and energy. I think I'm a ball of, of joy, if I would say that. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, I'm quite delighted to, to be here um, and present this pillar to you. So at the center of the Mental Pilot pillar is mental wellness, right? And mental wellness refers to a state of well-being where individuals can realize their own capabilities, cope with um, normal stresses of life and work, product and work productively. So that is what is at the center of the mental pilot pillar. It's mental wellness. And so how do we then um, make sure that the mental wellness of our participants is taken care of? We discuss important issues such as building resilience, such as you know, dealing with imposter syndrome and developing coping mechanisms. The coping mechanism part is normally under building resilience. As we go through the material, you'll really get to see um, how to develop coping mechanisms. But you know, this is how we are prioritizing the mental wellness of our participants by primarily looking at these um, core topics. So in my session, sessions two and six, We'll be looking at the will to lead, which is imposter syndrome, imposter syndrome was, and then the other session, which is the sixth session, we'll be looking at resilient leadership, which obviously speaks about resilience. So before we get into what we'll be speaking about when we're speaking about imposter syndrome, it's very important to lay a context to provide an introductory overview of what it is that we will be doing. So session two, which is the will to lead, which is the imposter syndrome one, it discusses imposter syndrome as a sense of incompetency which women and girls feel. And this contributes to their discouragement from partaking in certain leadership roles. Um, and given that this is something that is within women, we also have to look at what is around women. What is it that is not just within women, but that is around women that is causing them to feel very in adequate, to feel very unequipped and incompetent to be partaking in leadership roles. And that is the purpose of the social political facts that we here. These are the external things that are also limiting women. You know, um, if you look at the statistic, like it, it states here, you know, at present, someone like Sahala Wagzwide is, is the only female president out of the 54 presidents in Africa. You know, that is a very big, that is a very big jump. And it really just shows how much social and political structures that are just really inhibiting women um, from partaking in such leadership spaces, right? And I think this should have said, um, this, should have said the, this, this should have said the platform, the state, so you can really see how, the, how they link together. Um, normally, we would have to have a poll so that we can really just get to, to, to engage you on, on, and make you aware of how these social political factors um, really contribute to the discouragement of women. And then, still part of the introductory overview, we'll make you aware of the different barriers that it also encourage um, gender inequality in leadership. The different barriers that contribute to women still um, being discouraged, women still being um, challenged in terms of partaking in leadership roles. And now the first one is that we have the structural barriers, we have institutional barriers, we have individual barriers. The structural barriers do not necessarily refer to a house or like a proper building, but they refer to the structures that have been put around, like a denial of informal networks. You know, normally, especially in workplaces, um, employees would have um, uh, to say that, you know what, when we when we network with our partners, we, norm we normally go to golfing. Um, however, golfing is not really a woman's sport. So most men do not want to play sports. They can play sport, but it's really just populated by men. So, you know, when, when, they, when they put these kind of structures, they end up becoming so limiting to women because they know that women do not want to engage in in, in, in such sports. So when they have a partner they, they want to, to, to bring into the company, they take that partner to, 
to golfing and they know that women will not be there, girls will not be there. So they will not be able to have the opportunity to fully network and make and make important connections. So that is one of the, the examples of a structural barrier. And another barrier is an institutional barrier. Your institutional barriers refer to your stereotypes, to your um, discrimination that such as, you know, women cannot take more feminine roles like CEO, or even sometimes it even applies to me that men cannot be nurses and stuff, but these are really existent stuff. And then the most important one, which is which introduces imposter syndrome are individual barriers. Individual barriers are what is happening within women, as I've explained, that really discourages them so much. And this is a way of us to introduce them imposter syndrome. And by so saying, I, I hope you can see the I, I hope you can see the link between the, the the structural barriers and all the barriers and how they link with imposter syndrome because that is important. Oh wow. And then finally getting into the topic about imposter syndrome. Well, when you're talking about imposter syndrome, it's very much so important to really understand what it is so that we're speaking about the same thing. We are speaking about the same, con the, the same, con the same concept. And imposter syndrome is the persistent inability to believe that one's success is deserved or has been legitimately earned as a result of one's own success, as, one, as a result of one's own efforts and skills, right? And I've often made this example that this may even apply to you. You know, you are here, you are a facilitator, you have been through a rigorous interview process to be here, but you may feel like, you know what, I actually do not deserve to be here. They made a mistake. When Nandi Misa and team were busy um, scouting for facilitators to take, they should not have taken me, but that is not the case. You have run through a rigorous process that made sure that you are the one who is equipped, that you are the one who is relevant, that you are the one who is competent and therefore we're chosen. But these are really the daily struggles that we women and young girls get to experience. And so the objectives that, that you can expect to, 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 to learn is that, you know, after this, participants will get to understand what imposter syndrome is. You know, is it a mental disorder since while it's a syndrome? It's not a mental disorder, just to say. It's not a mental disorder, but this just hints to the point to say that, you know, it's so important for you to really understand so that even when you are in a situation and you feel like you're an imposter, you know what it is that you're feeling and therefore can deal with it. There's also the, the expectation or the objective that you will be able to identify triggers and imposter syndrome. What triggers your imposter syndrome? What, what, what is the circumstance that is normally around you that makes you feel like an imposter? And then lastly, you will learn to deal with imposter syndrome because it's no use for us to help you identify triggers of imposter syndrome, but not really equip you with how to deal with imposter syndrome when it submerges. So, yeah. So um, in increasing your understanding of your material, you can expect to watch informational videos of, on the, during the sessions. You can, you can expect to engage in important discussions, brainstorm ideas with others, show your perspective and participate and take impulse just for this session. Yeah, that is the end of the session on imposter syndrome. Now moving on to the, the session six, which speaks about resilient leadership. And the topic of course is resilience. Um, so the introduction tells a story. It tells a story of a very resilient woman, a woman or young girl who exemplified resilience. And this story is important because out of it, we can also see how important it is for us to, to be resilient. And it will also encourage us to, to take up space and show resilience in our lives, our communities, our churches, in everything. You know, you'll get to hear the story more and in depth during our sessions. Um, but I rest you for sure that it's a very encouraging story. It's a resilient story. And I tell you that even you, after getting to listen to the story, you'll be like, you know what? It's better to be resilient than life and, and just persevere and do the most. Um, and then after the introduction, and then we really get into resilience. Um, defining resilience as a mental ability to recover quickly from misfortune or change and, and perseverance being, you know, continuing in a course of action without regard to difficulty, discouragement and more. It's so easy to conflate um, resilience and perseverance is one thing. 
but they are really different. And hence, one of our outcomes is that you will get to understand the difference between resilience and perseverance. And our other outcome is that you will know how to use the five hours of resilience so that you can generally build up your resilience when you face challenges, when you face trouble, then you know how to deal with those. Um, and lastly, one of our objectives is that, you know, you'd be able to identify healthy coping mechanisms so that you can thrive not only in leadership, but in your life and everywhere else. Um, in this session, by the time that we are, we would have gone through it, you would have discussed with others the differences between resilience and perseverance. You would have discussed healthy coping mechanisms. You would have discussed the five hours of resilience. And I hope you can see that this part is really so much so about discussing with you, with others, because we really value your opinion. We value what you have to say. We value what you have to think. So we're not only presenting you and feeding you with all this information, but we're saying, hey, let us talk. How do you, how do you what normally what normally works for you for you to be resilient to be resilient what do you think the difference between um resilience and perseverance is so we truly value your your input we truly value your your contribution in that sense and yes this is the end of the session on resilient leadership and i am highly anticipating the session to come and um, super excited and yeah see you in the other room thank you Thank you very much, Aposia. Um, yeah, now I think we get a sense as well of what's going to happen uh, in those breakout sessions. And I think by the end of today, really, a lot would have shifted. Now, the third pillar of Project Me, that's the pillar that I'm responsible for. I'm the program director of that pillar. There are two sessions, as you've seen, I think, with the other two presenters. The first session talks about authentic leadership, and the second session is about confidence and presence. So I'm going to talk you through what uh, will be coming. I don't have a presentation to show. So it, this is just me telling you what's going to happen. Now, under the first, I mean, in the first session under authentic leadership, we're going to break down the word authentic leadership. We'll explain what authenticity is, and what leadership is or leadership is not. From there, we bring the two words together to explain what authentic leadership is about. I will also share a story about somebody that I know who for me exhibited authentic leadership. And participants will also be asked to share their stories based on the information that we would have shared in defining what authentic leadership is. And that is important so that when we move forward, then we have the same understanding of what that means. Now, how can we be authentic leaders if we don't understand ourselves? And that is why under authentic leader, uh, leadership, the first thing that we'll talk about or discuss, um, dissect, will be self-awareness. We need to know who we are. We need to identify our strengths. We need to identify our developmental areas and say, if we want to be those leaders who are going to be called authentic leaders, what is it that we need to make use of in terms of our strength? And what is it that we need to work on so that we can be those leaders? And when we do the second session on confidence and presence will define what that is because confidence has a lot, a lot to do with trusting yourself. When you're confident, it means to trust yourself. I mean, you can just imagine if somebody walks in a room and is not confident, the way they walk, you can actually see is because they don't trust themselves to be walking in at that particular moment. And as such, they don't exhume or exhibit that sense of presence. So your confidence influences how you present yourself. If somebody is, pre is a confident, you will feel them when they enter the room, you, that's, there's an energy around them that says, I am here. And we are going to talk about those because there is no way that you can be a leader and not be confident about who you are. 
whether there are shortcomings or not, but embracing yourself. So we start doing the work there. A lot of content of information that will be discussed, each and every individual has it. People are unique. There is no formula because we're all different. So this is just a few points that we are going to be discussing on, but the most of the information will come from the participants because this is very personal. And then we explain then the confidence. There's a video that we'll share that shows an example of somebody who's confident and who has presence. And knowing ourselves and where we want to go in terms of authentic leadership, knowing now how to be confident, knowing how to have that presence, we will then end the session by having a, a development plan and say, what are the things that I think I need to work on? Maybe some of my strengths can help me to be an authentic leader. What is it that I can use then to get there? Maybe there is something in terms of the areas I need to work on that can help me in, my, in this journey of becoming this leader that I want to be. What are those things? What are those activities? What are those goals, objectives? We draw a developmental plan. And there are seven stages that we are going to go through to help you to have a plan of what to do after today's session. And that is, that is what covers the pillar project me. We are not a destination. We are becoming. It's a process. Thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, maybe you can uh, take a, a, a one minute break by just closing our eyes because we know we've been listening, there's so much information and we're still going to the breakout rooms. So if you can just try to be present, just close our eyes just for one minute. I will count, just close.